beauty of uh, being able to bring the car into the woods is you can have a nice chair to sit on. I have actually done a, um, a video literally day after um, I finished the shelter um, doing an overnight, solo overnight here and um, I haven't uploaded it yet so that's a this may be a quick video before I do the other one. I've just been so busy since doing that video with the kids going back to school and there's been a lot going on so uh, I haven't done that. But I also want to apologise to uh, I haven't replied to the comments on that last video. I read all the comments and I love reading the comments. Um, annoyingly I'm actually useless on putting comments on uh, on YouTube or anything like that, but I do apologise. But I appreciate everyone who send, who likes to comment down, and it's it's a, it's a good when you get a nice comment, which generally most of them are. Um, sometimes it, make, it does make you feel like that it's worth doing these videos because when I first started doing YouTube videos, which must be I don't know eight years ago now, um, they were just for me really. I'm not worried about uh, subscribers. I never have been worried about subscribers because it was a question of me going out um, and filming something and it was giving me the purpose to put it into a, 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 a movie, a, a sort of short film and then uploading it which will be there forever hopefully and I look back on my videos quite often and that was the reason why it's pointless taking pictures and doing filming if it just sits on a computer doing nothing and that's what the problem I used to have. So YouTube was a, was for me a way, a purpose to put it into a video and upload it, and it was there for like the kids to see and why and what like, what I was getting up to, and it still is really. Um, so uh, subscribers and how many I get it doesn't bother me. You know I'm not chasing subscribers, never have done. Um, but when you sometimes you get a negative comment and a stupid comment. Um, it just, sometimes you feel yourself like, what, why should I bother doing this? But I've got to look beyond that and think, well, I didn't do it for that in the first place. I don't, and I still don't do it from your own pleasure of making a video and then looking back on it, you know, years later. And uh, But when I do get nice comments from people saying, oh, you know, good video, great, you really enjoyed it, I think it's a, it does, it gives you like a pat on the back and say, well, yeah, I'm glad I've done that now. Um, because, you know, when you're out filming, it does take up a lot of your time is, um, moving the cameras around and bits and pieces and trying to create something to try and capture the moment when you're here. That's what you're trying to do. I'm trying to capture the feeling I'm getting in the woods because I like watching videos of people not sitting around talking like I am now. That's why I don't talk a great deal in the videos. It's because I want people to see what I'm doing in the videos and try and get that feeling of I'm there as well with with you and that's that's why I, you know I try and create that sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't but that's that's the uh, that's the essence what I'm trying to get out when I do a, when I do a video and and yet yeah, so it is all for I'm not chasing subscribers I never have done I don't even care um, uh, it doesn't bother me that I'm not trying to make money out of YouTube or anything like that uh, not made, never never tried to and not you know I don't so, just apologise for any if I haven't commented on that last video. Um, yeah. But I will, there, is a, there is another video coming up of a, a solo overnight I've done here, and also um, this one. <laughs> but that's about it. I, I, it's I've been too busy I, um, to even edit the video. That's why I've done the comments. I've just been, it's been busy, hectic week and a half, uh, work and sort of family stuff with kids and. 
my son's doing his mock exams and stuff like that. So, right, that was a bit of a long rabbit for me, but uh, okay, it looks like someone's bowl, so yeah, let's get a cup of tea. Well, we'll knock the heat down a bit. show you this uh, leather um, tool pouch, which is what I'm calling it. Um, I've got any new tools, they're the same old tools. I just had, used to have a, a small uh, pack where I, where I had a little carving spoon and a, a little, uh, just a shorter uh, knife, more one, and some uh, sort of sandpaper sand it down afterwards but um, sort of put more tools in this now. Now I'm only showing you this really not, not because I know where to get one from because it's took me long enough to get one myself um, but just uh, if you do come across one and you like carving and um, this is a uh, good option and they're not a lot of money I think this was but well, I know it was it was delivered from eBay, 9.99. So it's in nice condition. So um, on this side, I've got can't think on top of what it's called, but it's a drill. So I've got a drill there. 
and two little chisels which uh, I picked up from sort of wood fair a couple of years ago. Um, to be honest, I haven't found a proper use for them yet but I'm sure I will want you know for gouging out smaller bits and a, a larger one if that's in focus or not. But this is a straight but I'd love to have that to have a, a curve on the end so I'm looking out for some more um, but they're really nice quality and I really do like because they're old and nice spoon uh, knife there and then here Got the smaller mora and this one is the same but it's opposite way the uh, the grind is the grind's going to uh, let's see if I put it out there we go you see uh, this, that's, the, that's the cutting point now to be honest, that needs uh, stropping. It feels a bit, feels a bit rough. To be honest, I can feel it. Um, I might do. That. I've got a sharpening kit with me, so yeah, two knives, a spoon knife, and in the back here, I've got some uh, sort of sandpaper, but it's the reusable stuff, and I can't think what it's called. Um, but basically, you just bash it out, and it's works fine and I've had that set for about a year and a half so that's what I keep in that side this side still a bit of a work in progress but got another spoon knife there um, here's a spoon I'm working on that's, that's the one there and I've got another more knife which has got a slightly bigger handle and a bit of a longer blade can get it on there no nope, just trying to focus on the wrong thing so yes yeah, slightly bigger handle got a bit of a point on the edge <coughs> but it's pretty lethal that one to be honest and I've got a spoon knife there, another one, but it's a, di it's a different shape one. One's got um, a grind on both sides, um, and this one's only got a grind, it goes to a point at the end. And in this bigger patch, which I can put something else in there, is the Silky 120, which is pretty good for this sort of work. Um, there is another little pocket in the back there, I ain't got nothing in now. But they all fit in there quite nice, and that's all the major tools. I've got some more tools, but they're a bit larger. And that's it. So what I'm going to do now? And it's got a nice strap on it as well. Um, I'm going to carry on with that spoon. So that is the job of the day. But <coughs> let me get me um, little uh, sharpening kit. I've got a couple of sharpening kits. But and this one is basically an old uh, Timberland um, glasses case but I've had two Timberland glasses over the years and the cases they come in are pretty good and in here I've got only sharpened stones which is quite good for doing the, uh, the spoon knives Pick that up at the show. That yeah, fits in and all right. Then I've got a strop, just a leather strop. I've got that. Spurs poke, is it called? And also, which I don't really need them in there, but a couple of like smaller. Um, this is quite a fine one, sharpening stones, great for uh, doing them spoons, knives. So I'm going to give a couple of them knives a go. Just give, give it a quick strop, really, nothing else. So I'm not doing a great deal with it, just because there's a lot of fucking fill of burr on it. No one has their own ways of sharpening. Um, 
45 an angle that I seem to work out all the time. So we've gone over that a few times. I'm just going to get this drop. I don't know how, it feels pretty sharp. But let's just go over it with this. Feels quite sharp. I can't keep shaving my arms all the time. <laughs> Every time I do it, I shave her, but yeah, can you? I don't know if you can see, but. That's well sharp. So it didn't take much. But there is definitely some burrs on that. I can feel that straight away. I haven't really got no plans when I do these spoons question it to see how the wood goes and when I am carving and I'm, I'm, I'm feeling how the wood is and what where the way the grain's going because sometimes you can go straight into it and uh, you know you're, you're hitting the grain so you have to change your angle Yeah, it's nice and sharp now. And sometimes don't go too hard into the wood, especially when you're doing the spoon, the bowl. Don't go too hard into it. Now I'm sure these <coughs> custom knives for my for spoons and that are great and I would buy some in time maybe um, it's one of the things you want to try them out to see if they are worth the money but it's a nice spoon carving is a nice relaxing thing to do especially in the woods especially if you're in a group of people it's good as well when you're sitting around the campfire and one thing I'd always uh, say whenever you're carving a spoon when you start feeling a bit tired just stop because that's when the accidents happen accidents happen all the time and it's one of the things that we all do it we all cut ourselves every now and again Sometimes you just get too carried away. Right, there's the bowl. It actually took about 10 minutes. Just taking my time with it. So now, you can see there's too much weight on the back here. I'm gonna take that off. I'm just gonna take it off slow.
So what I want to do in the back here, I want to take out a little groove in here. I want to try and get a, so this is rounder on top. Just with this, and maybe a small section taken out in the middle of there. And uh, just a question using the uh, spoon knife. And just, what I should actually do is get my pen and just mark round that. bowl in there. Now I'm going to take down the edges and just sort of give it a like a, a rounder look. So it will look quite harsh at the moment but um, I want to take down the edges. It'll look nice hopefully but you've got to be careful you don't take too much out. I'm just going to round off. Bugs galore. Um, so here we are so far. I'm quite happy with the shape of it, but I wanna, I'm a bit worried that if I go any deeper with it, with the uh, with the knife, I might make a mistake. Um, I'm, almost, I'm not quite sure how it's coming out yet, especially that back bit. So I'm just gonna give it a quick sanding over, and this is the stuff I use. Um, so I'm just gonna go in for the back here, just to see how it looks. So we've got there now, it's almost finished. And uh, I want to put a, a hole in it so I can put a little bit of leather down you through it. So I've got to find in this little kit I've got here. This. I've got to be really careful because I don't want to split it out or anything like this. This is quite good, this one because it's got, got a fine end to it. Just really carefully, you just want to put a little hole in it. Just afraid, I don't want to split out of the wood. I think 
how to do it, so I'm just going to sand that down there. Quite nice actually. And when you sand it with a really fine, this is like a 400 grit, you're just going over it to feel if there's any sort of little sharp edges you can feel it's going to stick out. But so far, I've been going over this for about five minutes with this really fine grit paper. But, um, it's been all good. It's kind of a nice colour actually, it's going quite dark. Surprisingly, this is cherry. So what I do, bloody the bugs are everywhere, look at them. In this uh, green um, Australian uh, water bottle, water bottle pouch, sorry. Um, I don't know if I showed you a video on it really, what I keep in it, but I use a car finder kit, what I've had for two years, well it must be about three, four years now, and uh, I've got another bottle over there, which is, I picked up a bottle cheap for a tenner, the Pathfinder bottle, um, but I don't, it's not a kit, it's just a bottle, but inside here, which I love these pouches because they're so tough, um, I've got one of the pot grabbers, for the, or the bottle, the fish things, um, and I keep a complete kit in there, so it's got the stove and the cup. So that's the kit with the uh, with the fish hook. Then in the front pouch, I've got a lid for the cup. I had that little spoon that you saw me sort of use earlier in the frying pan. I've got a meal bank bag and some water purification tablets. And that fits in there all quite nicely. That's quite a nice little kit. All containing one in one pouch. And that all goes in there, and it's, I love these pouches, the, uh, the Australian ones. It's just quality, feel nice. Uh, yeah, you can hang it off your belt, even though it's quite heavy, but you can do it. And this is quite the hell more favourite cool bottle pouch. So yeah, it's quite, quite nice, still drying off with a bit of iron on it still, but it's all clamped, all done, packed up, all ready to go. It's not that late, I think it's only about three o'clock. Just come out to three, but I mean, yeah, five, six hours. It's come over a bit cloudy now. But the old leaves are almost all down and uh, definitely getting colder so so um, apologize again for not commenting back on that last video uh, um, I've got another video coming up of overnighter and I must be just do this one quick to explain why and uh, hopefully I'll see you soon Ta-da.
as you can see there's a load of these little fly nitty things all over the place it's really annoying <laughs> 